Why does food go brown when it's cooked? Foods like chips, bread and toast, onions and meat all go brown when we cook them due to two main reasons. The first of which is caramelisation and the second is the Maillard reaction. Caramelisation happens when you heat sugars and they react to form lots of new compounds that together make up the colour, taste and smell of caramel. So before we look at the chemistry involved, let's quickly see some caramel being made. Here's a pan of sugar and some water which is being heated to make caramel. So you can see the mixture starting to turn brown and that's due to the sugars having reacted and formed new compounds that are causing the brown colour. Let's keep heating it for a little bit longer and see what happens. So now it's a lot darker in colour and smells and looks a lot more like caramel. Let's keep heating. So now it's a lot darker and starting to smell a lot of burnt sugar instead of caramel. So let's leave that there and have a look at some of the chemistry involved now. So white table sugar is made up of sucrose, which has this structure. And of course we had some water in the pan too, so let's stick that there as well. Now, when we heat these two up, water actually becomes quite acidic at 100 degrees C. So it will then hydrolyze the sucrose into D-fructose and D-glucose which are these two molecules. If we then continue heating these, these two will react with each other in all sorts of mixtures to form a large number of compounds. Some of the main compounds formed are caramelan, which is C12H12O9, caramelen, C36H18O24, and caramelin, C24H26O13, and these are thought to give caramel its dark brown colour. But what about flavours? What causes those? Well, 2,3-butanedione is buttery. Esters, such as this one, are sweet and give a fruity or rum-like flavour. Mortal is quite often thought of as toasty. And furans, like these at the top, are often nutty. The Maillard reaction was first described by French chemist Louis Maillard in 1912 and it happens when we have amino acids as well as sugars reacting together. It's another form of non-enzymatic browning as caramelisation is and it's not just one reaction, it's another complex series of reactions in which hundreds of different compounds are formed. Maillard reactions are important in frying, baking and in fact pretty much all sorts of or heating of food and they contribute to the flavours of bread, cake, meat, popcorn, chocolate, beer and coffee. Maillard reactions start off with a reducing sugar such as glucose reacting with an amino acid which is shown here as RNH2 to make the reaction slightly easier to follow. The first step results in the formation of an N-glycosylamine which will isomerize into all three of these compounds. Each of these will then react slightly differently in the next steps. And this combined with the five or more reducing sugars often found in food and the 20 amino acids is why Maillard reactions give such a large mixture of products. The next steps depend on which product of the first reaction is being used. Either the amino acid is removed again and this results in a reactive species that, which then goes on to form form flavour compounds such as HMF, which is hydroxymethyl furfural, which is shown there. And the other reaction is one called an Amadori rearrangement, which is the starting reaction on a route to form compounds called melatinoids, which are responsible for the brown colouring in cooked food. Going back to the HMF again, you'll notice that this and furfural, another important flavour component of the Maillard reaction, are very similar to these three flavours components we saw in caramelisation earlier. Hopefully this video has given you a bit of an introduction and shown you just how much chemistry is involved in everyday life.